up next on The Bottom Line, a local farmer whose vision serves as a model for the future. At my age, it's nice to have something to do. The council welcomes an honorary member for a day of local government 101. Ms. Wu, uh, we turn to you for help on that as well. And a new program that offers residents of all ages a fresh start. It's important for me, I'm new in the country, to have, a, to have education. Thanks for watching everyone, I'm Susan Kennedy. Nationwide and in Montgomery County, there is a growing movement in urban agriculture. The demand for organic, locally sourced food is skyrocketing. Urban farms not only provide sustainable and healthy food options, but they preserve green space and create educational and economic opportunities. But One Man in Silver Spring has been ahead of the trend for decades, and now the county is working to help him keep living off the land. Just a couple of blocks off Fenton Street in busy downtown Silver Spring is a one-acre plot of land where Charlie Coiner well, it's a nice day today. and his daughter Lynn live as small-town farmers. And what's this right here? What is this? Is this well, kale? Yeah, that's yeah, a dinosaur. dinosaur kale. A dinosaur now, kale. For more than 30 years, the Coiners have been farming this urban plot. These, these are turnips. Oh, look at that. And over time, they have become somewhat of an iconic pair in urban farming. I usually come out in the mornings, uh, you know, and work along. That's during the summer, you know, till about noon, and then come out again in the fall. And, you know, right now about three o'clock or so, if I've got to water or something other, I try to keep the water, the lettuce waters and the the radishes and, and, you know, the turnips and all my greens. I grew up on a farm, and so, but it was a farm in the city. So I'm used to uh, uh, living on a farm, but having all the conveniences of the city. And Silver Spring is wonderful. Charlie Coiner has been a farmer all his life. Born in Montgomery County, his family owned 33 acres in Rockville where the Mid-Pike Plaza once stood. His grandfather built the house he currently lives in and the land it sits on has always been used as a farm. I've got collards, I've got broccoli, I've got cauliflower, I've got cabbage, mustard greens, turnips, radishes. Aren't they pretty? Charlie Coiner will be 96 this month. At my age, it's nice to have something to do. You, you know what I mean? It keeps you going. But to him, talking about his age and the uniqueness of his farm is not what interests him. He's proud of the fruits and vegetables he grows and sells. These are some uh, beets here. And this is some kale right here. And this is mustard greens, this green. But as Silver Spring has grown, so have the costs associated with living there. The property taxes for the coiners were $21,000 this year, and they are rising on an annual basis. And because the coiner property is only one acre, it does not qualify for farm status that would give them a tax credit. So Lynn Coiner decided to contact her council member, Tom Hucker, to see if something could be done to alleviate the burden. And I wrote to Tom, sent him an email. Immediately he got in touch with me. The next day he was working on it. Mm. And I know in October he said, well, we've got a draft of the bill together. We just want you to know this. And, but they're having to tweak to make sure it eliminates, you know, we don't want a neighbor planting a pack of corn in the backyard and wanting to get farm status or have the urban tax credit. Unfortunately, because of this quirk in state tax law, they're taxed as a single family home and not as a farm. We all know what a farm is, but state law says you have to be more than three acres to be a farm, even though you're farming. So all our bill does is it corrects the tax code so that they are taxed as a farm, which would lower their property taxes and allow the family to stay on the farm um, and keep, to keep that uh, property in farming rather than just giving into the inexorable pressure for uh, development. 
This measure will help the coiners keep their 40-year urban farm running. It will allow me to keep the farm, to never have to sell it. And, you know, as I get older, I'm an only child. Uh, I'll be in that house all by myself. But if I have young people working the ground all the time, I really won't be alone. The coiners sell their produce at the Silver Spring Farmer's Market, and Snyder's Grocery Store sells his lettuce. Bye. There are plenty of longtime customers who stop by, like Barbara Stein. She travels by bus from Rockville to get some of the coiners' goods. Um, it's beautiful. He has, he's really nice. I talk and she with gets, him. Or she gets nice fresh stuff. Yes, you know, the, the, the vegetables and fruits here are excellent, and I've been coming here for about 10 years. There have been plenty of developers who have approached them about selling their property, but the coiners don't even think twice about giving up their slice of heaven. Their plan is to one day turn it into an outdoor agricultural classroom. Eventually, when he can't do this or something happens, you know, they have the high school programs where high school students come in, they garden, they take it to the market and sell it, and that's how they make money. Our few remaining urban farms are underappreciated gems that provide numerous public benefits. We, there is a, an urban agriculture movement around the, um, around the country. Um, people love farming generally. Uh, there's more and more interest in knowing where your food comes from and teaching kids about that. There's more and more interest in buying food that's grown locally rather than uh, creating the greenhouse gas problems of shipping your food from all over the world. Oh, that I just picked. It's really good. There's more people interested in this. We want to encourage local farming and local agriculture, so this bill will hopefully do that. Hucker's bill is expected to be voted on within the next several weeks. And Charlie Coiner, well, he will continue to do what he knows and does best. Recently, the council had an extra member on the dais for the day, but this person was not elected. She isn't even old enough to vote. 15-year-old Angela Wu won a contest sponsored by Councilmember Craig Rice, and the payoff was getting to spend the day as an honorary member of the legislative body of Montgomery County. This is Angela Wu, and she's our council member for the day. Angela is going to be spending the entire day with us uh, as a council member. It's a great idea. I think the more we can give students real application, real understanding in the context and the experience of different kinds of jobs, different kinds of responsibilities, different kinds of thinking, the better we're preparing students for whatever that next step is in life. She wrote a fantastic essay about um, really talking about diversity uh, and, and how we incorporate that into our curriculum, how we make sure that uh, for us that we're uh, delivering a message to all of our students about succeeding and incorporating them and bringing them all together. Uh, something that speaks to me, uh, something that we need to do in terms of lifting all of our students and really getting them involved and engaged. The County Council of Montgomery County, Maryland hereby congratulates Angela Wu for being selected as the first ever honorary Montgomery County Council member for a day. She's very excited about uh, today's opportunity, uh, especially uh, she just learned about how the U.S. government at all the levels works, uh, brought all the uh, documents she needed, and she read all the uh, uh, you know, the uh, bills uh, which are going to be uh, passed today. So she did a lot of work for, for today's work. And this is a great opportunity for her to have a first hand experience to see how the government at local level works, how they pass the legislation bills. And she's over, over excited. Uh, she's going to be sitting at the dais and basically serving in the same role as a council member. And so I'm honored to have her here. Uh, she's a fantastic student, as I'm sure. Uh, a lot of folks will find out by talking to her, and we're just really excited about the opportunity. So I uh, really want to welcome Angela. Thank and you. Uh, you know, I'm very proud uh, about the great work that she's done up to this point. I took an AP government course last year, and I, uh, we learned a lot about um, government and like how it's structured. And I thought it was really interesting, and it's really unique, especially we learned about the history of it and why it's so special. So I wanted to be able to be a part of it and really experience it firsthand instead of just learning about it. So I did this competition to be able to get the experience. As you work through this, think about explaining this to Ms. Wu. T think about in your head, can Ms. Wu understand what we're doing and why? It's a good test of us as we sort through this.
So, Mr. Orland, keep that in mind. Buckle your seatbelts. It'll be a bumpy ride. Ms. Wu, uh, we turn to you for help on that as well. Uh, Mr. Reed. We're collaborating right now. We were talking about some of the different uh, points of view that are being brought up by different council members and equating it to making sure that she understood some of the decision points that we have, really trying to understand uh, what's at stake here in terms of uh, priorities, understanding that when it comes to how much folks are going to continue to pay and what those implications are, uh, how that affects housing costs, how that affects all other kinds of things that go on here in the county. The decision points, although they seem very mundane, have much far-reaching uh, impacts. And so really understanding the core of while this might be something that deals with some great individual details about uh, tests and policy decisions, they actually have more far-reaching effects. It's just really unique to be able to sit with all the council members and see what it's really like up front with everybody. So um, a lot of people ignore what happens on the city or the district level because they don't think it's as important as the national level. But really after the hearing today, you can tell it's really important that people should be more engaged in not just the national things, but also the district and city level. Montgomery County recently became the first jurisdiction in Maryland to launch the Career Online High School, the world's first accredited private online school district. The program is specifically designed to re-engage adults into the education system and prepare them for further education or the workforce. Tile Christian came to the United States in March. He spoke little English, but knew in order to provide a better life for his family, he needed an education. When he learned about the county's online career high school, he decided to sign up. It's important for me, I'm new in the country, to have, a, to have education and then I can do college. I want to build a family. It's very important education to have a good job and for my children to, to show an example. Montgomery County Public Libraries launched this new program in June of this year. Currently, more than 60,000 adults over the age of 25 in Montgomery County do not have a high school degree. Through this program, participants are doing schoolwork about 8 to 10 hours per week and they have up to 18 months to complete the curriculum. For many, is the opportunity of a job. Um, for a lot of people, it's the opportunity to um, advance in a job or to get a promotion. A lot of people are stuck and can't go any further because they don't have that high school diploma. And for some, it's just the opportunity um, of higher education. It gives them that ability to make a change in their own lives. Uh, it empowers them uh, greatly. And so those are the kinds of things that are extremely important to us. In order to be accepted to this free program, applicants must complete an online self-assessment and two-week prerequisite course followed by an interview. There are 20 seats available and currently there are eight participants. Career Online High School also provides academic coaches for the students, something Tile says has been invaluable. If I need help, I can ask her. It's very good. She support me and uh, she give me all the information that I need. Someone who doesn't have a high school diploma who um, has been wanting to do this, this is the way to go because there's so much support. There's you know, an academic coach that's assigned to you. There's the entire library system um, with all of the support that we bring. Um, so this is a good way to do this and it's free, completely free. For more information about the Career Online High School program, visit the website. Well, that's all we have time for for this edition of The Bottom Line. For County Cable Montgomery, I'm Susan Kennedy. Thanks for watching. Did you check? Oh, you, you got it. You know, since I got rid of my car, I really enjoy walking. Okay. Got it. No? Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Oh, you're home early. You live with your mom? That'll set your game back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. So who's going to do what? I'll pack the dead batteries. Great. I'll only put what I don't need into a duffel bag. Perfect. That's totally unhelpful. No problem. Meanwhile, I will try to comfort everyone by speaking in a calm voice. 
And who is going to handle supplies? I can forget to do a list for us. Thanks, pal. We couldn't be any less prepared. I'm proud of you guys. Talk to your kids about who to call, where to meet, what to pack. Visit ready.gov kids for tips and information.